This is Access and Allies 1914 on the Two Others channel, video number 18, which means we are in the middle of round 9, going to the end of round 9. And we are with the Brits, with a funny looking buy. Um, they've got quite a bit of cash on hand. They've saved some, they've gained some from the Ottoman Chancellery. Um, and they're buying themselves infantry artillery and two more transport vessels. We're using red chips because the um, the Entente are so strong, we've <laughs> gone through our stack of greys and uh, all the uh, light blue colours. It'll be sorted out before it gets on the board. It gets too confusing otherwise. Um, we'll start off over in the uh, Far East, or Middle East at least. What we're going to be doing is being really naughty. Um, we're going to take a couple of these guys here from the Indian factory on the boat. We're going to go into C zone 29, where they start off from, into 28, which is one, and into 19, which is their two moves. Um, one, sorry, 28 is their two moves, rather. It must have carried away. They are now roughly in the Trans Jordan uh, region. That's going to bring them closer, clearly, to the um, what will be the ex-Ottoman Empire. But Southern Europe, back up and through, we're going to be we're going to be doing some big and bad battling over here. We're also going to be moving these guys from Mesopotamia. They're not messing around in Mesopotamia. They're saying we're going to have a go at you, sunshine, and they're going to take one of the guys from Ankara. Just, just one infantry extra. I think that will be enough. I don't want to leave ourselves short for the main Constantinople battle. Constant, Constantinople, as it's now being called by me. Um, so that will be a battle that we will be doing. Um, we have a slight advantage as, as the Brits. The rest of the guys from Ankara are going to be moving into Constantinople. We have to hope that the battle in Sevastopol does work. Um, we are very hopeful. Um, but in here, we will have one, two, um, three, four men and approximately seven artillery on a rough count. Um, we should be able to do that and achieve our um, total victory over the Ottomans this turn. Over in Europe, or oh, just go to the Canadian land first. These guys are going to get on the French boat. Must remember we're doing this. And the French will move them next turn. Uh, in Europe itself, we were suggesting, or it was a suggestion, that the Brits grew a pair and moved all their, tro all their troops on three transports into Kiel. I'm... <sighs> I'm not so comfortable with, with that move. It's, it's a good move, um, except where Holland is bereft of people and Germany could walk in, they could actually cut off the British fleet there. There is uh, 10, 13 troops in, in Berlin and obviously more to come when they reinforce. Um, just loading six in, it will be an annoyance to the Germans, um, uh, but I don't think it will be decisive enough to be a, a full distraction. However, a slightly detuned version, it's still pretty brave of the plucky British Tommies, is to run the risk of um, putting three transport ships through the mines of Sea Zone 10 and dropping the guys off in Holland. Um, we can also move the guys that are in Belgium at the moment into Holland. It does slightly split the forces here, but that is as much a distraction for the Germans as it would have been if we put everything into Belgium and just tried to press forward a little bit. Um, obviously, the Brits can't attack from Belgium just with three, two artillery, three artilleries and one man. But uniting those all into Holland now, I think we are strong enough as as America land and be strong enough as Brits, especially with two more troop ships coming over, that we could slip into Holland, um, provided our, our move here works first time round. Um, so, what we are going to be doing is moving the six men. We're not moving the expensive tanks and, and uh, artillery, um, simply because you've got to move six units in, they're not going to be attacking anything, they're all going to be defending, so they're defending at three rather than attacking. Um, 
So it's 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 um, for the purposes of of this movement here. Yes, just get them into into Holland. Um, we have to roll the um, the dice for the avoiding the minefield and hope not to lose one of those ships. Uh, we have an aircraft that can also fly over into Holland, add some protection. But being as though it's only one unit, it does feel a little bit on the weak side. If we were to do that and get bashed, it would come off the board fairly quickly, especially if, if one of these big um, Hanover Berlin kind of units came into place. Um, putting it into Belgium is not an option because the Brits are going to move out of Belgium into Holland. You must have an infantry unit in there. Um, so I, I think much as I don't particularly want to do it, I think putting the plane into Holland is is the right move. So, with all that said, and there's a lot being said, let's have a look at getting those three troop ships in through the mines. Now, I grab me three dice. It doesn't matter which one goes in first, second, or third. It's all the same ships. It's just the three transport ships or trying to avoid ones, and I'm just seeing fives and sixes. So, we have all those troops from the UK uh, have moved in to Holland. Um, it's, at the moment, um, American controlled, it remains American controlled, but the, the Brits, they, they, they are there. Um, the guys from Holland, from Belgium, rather, are also moving in. I'm doing this off camera, but I'm just reaching over. And... We'll be looking at the attack way up there, Mesopotamia. The guys don't mess around, um, and they are going to be attacking Sevastopol. And I've just realised I put a man in there and added that chip, and I shouldn't have done. You understand that, don't you? Um, there should be just the two infantry artillery attacking from Mesopotamia, plus the one man. Have we got a spare man? Yes, I have. Who came from the Ankara. He stays in Mesopotamia. He's one move behind. That's me getting ahead of myself. So, the Brits will have two infantry, two artillery, and Sevastopol have two artillery and one infantry. It's a, it's a fair fight. Enough. Brits have four at three. And there's three hits. One, two, three. They've actually wiped it out in one move. That's pretty impressive for the plucky Brits. The three units in Sevastopol from Austria-Hungary, and they get three hits as well. Man alive. OK, that just leaves one British man in Sevastopol, but one is all you need. I'm glad we got a second guy in Mesopotamia. I might need a rethink of where I position the units, but... Um, See, I'm, I'm talking and looking in different places. Yeah, we have to lose these three. Boom, boom, boom. They're done. That's the message. That's the Austria Hunger hits on us, and our hits on them is that us being the royal us. Brits are into Sevastopol. That will be three IPCs to them and three off of Austria Hungary. Mm. The next battle I shall get ready on the board properly for us all, is the Constantinople. I will see you in a sec. Constantinople is on the board. I've had a quick count up, and assuming that this happens, the uh, UK will be channeling in 50 IPCs. They're going to be the, um, the chip leader very, very soon. Um, so, on the board, this is the battle. With air superiority, 7 artillery... Going to get booming in at fours, infantry at threes, and these are the last of the Constantinople forces in there. Three artillery and one infantry. We have rolled the plane first, just because we can, and it gets a miss. The seven artillery, we're looking at um, three hits, four hits, sorry, and I'm seeing five already. Uh, actually, six. Um, that's it, that's done. Constantinople has fallen, the last of the Ottoman infantry and artillery are all gone. Um, who are the Brits? In reply, um, who survives, who dies? 
And they got um, three hits in reply, so um, slightly tougher job than they would have hoped, but that is a done deal now. That is the Ottomans no longer part of the game. Um, just there. I think, I think what's going to happen next will be the Italian go, and where the Brits suffered quite badly up here, that wasn't the, uh, the easiest battle for them, and they have pushed forward. It's possible that Austria-Hungary could go this way into Sevastopol, but not if the Bulgarians, not if the Greeks all come forward and start putting pressure. So the Italians, whilst they're a minor force um, within the game as a, as a whole, they're, I think they're the perennial kicking horse, they're actually going to be playing a very important role in helping the Brits out this turn. So let me just tidy everything up and get on to the Italian go and I will see you there. Italy on turn 9 can afford to buy themselves 8 infantry. They've had a bit, a bit of savings and some IPCs come their way from the Smyrna and Syrian Desert campaign. Talking of Smyrna and Syrian Desert, let's just deal with those guys first. They're going to move into Constantinople and into Smyrna on a little shuffly shuffle and start moving back towards southern Europe. Uh, there was a half idea again of utilising a transport ship that's here and bringing guys in and just being generally more annoying than we wanted to be um, over in Serbia, uh, Bulgaria kind of way. But I, th I think for now I don't want to um, compromise the, the good stronghold the Italians do have here. Um, however, different story here, we are going to be going into battle in Venice. These guys here are going to move forward. That gives us a numerical um, advantage by a fraction, I believe, and the guys from Rome move forward to do the filling in. You get the score. Um, I was thinking about not attacking here, just reinforcing the region. Um, it, but it would allow the guys in Trieste um, to start folding down and the general circle of reinforcements coming from Vienna to start filling that area in again. And I, I think with just the one Austria-Hungary infantryman there, um, six artillery with air support, they're going to do some damage back. But whatever we can do as Italy to Austria-Hungary is going to be expensive um, and you know, a, a massive distraction to the Central Powers' campaign that is well, it, it's floundering like a flatfish at the moment. So uh, on the board is that battle. It's ready to rock and roll. It might seem a little bit dark in here, but it's got dark outside. We're in for a storm, I believe. Um, so, we're going to move the uh, Austria-Hungary artillery up because of their one plane that's there. The four artillery promote four infantry. I'm getting me words better these days. And uh, we're going to roll the eight at four. Sorry, <laughs> did I get it wrong? Eight at three. Oh. Oh. Uh, middly. One, two, three, four. Yeah, yeah, middly, but yeah, expensive. No doubt about that. And the three infantry on their own going in at twos get one hit. Okay, slightly under power, but yeah, I'm not going to complain too much. So, five off of the um, Austria-Hungary forces when we come to that. Their one plane rolls in at two and misses. Their one defending infantry at three gets a hit. Nice. And their six artillery at four. Hold on to your hats and everything else. Oh, just two. Man alive. We got away with that one, didn't we? So that will be Italy done. There will be five less units here, which will be, well, all their artillery. Thank you very much. And three less Italians, uh, which will be one, two, three. That's how the Legion will look post-battle. Uh, next up will be the Americans um, shipping across shipping in, moving, moving backwards and forwards, knocking over the Brits <laughs> en route, and deciding whether we do actually attack from Belgium or just fill in. And I'm thinking this time it might just be a, a filling in job. 
as in reinforcing. And talking of reinforcements, of course, the guys get reinforced into Rome down here as well. See you in a little bit. America, on turn number nine and the end of video number 18, are not going to be buying. Reason being, um, they haven't got enough ships to get things backwards and forwards on the shuffle as it is. So let's save our money this turn and um, give us a better opportunity to, to, to focus our purchase for the next round. Um, and obviously more cash, whether we decide to buy more ships or something. But we've got, we've got quite a few going forward. Um, they're also not going to be attacking. I was in two minds as to whether they're actually used, utilising these tanks and, and push them forward into the Ruhr. They will be attacking at threes and, and uh, or twos and um, absorbing four hits. But I can't really see the Ruhr coming back and attacking them if we don't do that. Um, there's... About five, six, seven, eight units in the Ruhr, and obviously um, eight units attacking, you're going to set back, say, four damage, which the Americans would be able to absorb with their infantry units. Um, and the Ruhr will be forward, further forward than it wants to be. It will be getting itself enclosed in a, in a sort of a small pincer if it did that. So I, I, I figure that the Germans in the Ruhr were going to be, are going to be holding station. So I'm more content this time to just run a, a, an American um, convoy system, no problem at all with this. These guys that are in the sea zone number seven, they can all shuffle forward and reach the English Channel, sea zone nine, which will give us an extra three infantry and three artillery in Belgium. The guys from Washington, there's six boats or six uh, spaces available and we have the units to move forward into sea zone seven. And all these boats that are in the channel here, there's actually uh, four of them, can go one, uh, two, and get back into Sea Zone 7, heading back towards this way for the pickup on next go when we'll have obviously plenty of cash to, with which to do it. Um, let me just get that um, tidied up and then we'll do a flyby to end this video. Well, that's the uh, empty American state, as you can see, and the units moving backwards and forwards in the Atlantic Ocean over into the, uh, the, the the Europe Central. Quick little flyby look at what we got here. Um, the Ruhr looks just about strong enough to withhold one attack. Maybe, maybe not. The Germans obviously will be able to move in from Berlin and Hanover. Berlin, Hanover. And try to reinforce these areas before the, um, the Entente get, to, um, get stuck into them too heavily. But how far and how fast do the Germans want to push? Similarly, with the Austria-Hungarians um, having this almighty great tussle with the Italians on the board, the Italians doing a sterling job here, France coming through to back them up with some from a southern route and also from some guys that are putting pressure this way, even though they're not into Tyrolia. There's a, there's a threat here now with um, Munich being so weak um, Austria-Hungary have to look this way and they have to look this way from where the Brits and the Italians are coming through um, uh, via the back door. Um, that will be it for video number 18 and the end of round 9. Put this down, get rid of the shaky camera. Uh, video number 19 will begin round 10 with Austria-Hungary. Um, it's not going to be the, the final battle of the war, that's, that's for sure, but um, it, there, it, there's no way back for the, for the central powers, is there? All that's left to say is um, thank you very much for watching. I make these videos in aid of a charity called the Cure Parkinson's Trust. Um, you will find a link to them below this video and in the uh, header on the uh, channel page. If you happen to have a spare YPC or... Tyrolea, you could send to them. I'm sure they'd appreciate it. Until video number 19 and uh, turn 10, be cool.